Hello, this is my East Hampton studio in Massachusetts. It's my fourth studio in my long career as a ceramic artist. I've had two studios in London and two in America. And this is where I currently work. It's at the back of the house. It was a garage. I think you probably could have fitted three cars in here. Um, so it's a nice big space. And it's night time. I'm going to take you on a short tour of the studio. And first and most importantly is the sink. This is a, a real luxury to have. I've had studios with no sink and no running water. So I'm forever grateful for this uh, piece of equipment. And over here is the wall of figure drawing. I try to draw uh, the figure on a regular basis. Even though I'm not known as a figurative artist, this is a very important activity and it does inform the sculpture work that I make, um, the forms being very similar uh, in many senses and you know, the energy, the organic form is all inextricably linked to, to all living things, trees and animals. Um, so it's, it's very, well, it's vital, this, this kind of work. And uh, it's a very difficult and very painful thing to do. Uh, it's not, I, I enjoy it on one level, but at the same time, it's full of anxiety and angst doing <laughs> because it's so difficult but um, it it does it does feed directly into the sculpture that I make here in the studio the the way forms twist and turn the 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 way masses uh, move in space and the flesh and the bones coming to the surface of the form or scrunching together all these things have have a place in the animal sculpture that I make so I, I don't see it as being something separate the, the two are tied together so there's the back door which I sometimes use uh, lots of tubes and sticks which I employ when I'm making my sculpture those of you who've worked with me or, or seen me demonstrate will know how those are part of the uh, making process. There are three kilns over there, the baby kiln, the mummy kiln, the daddy kiln. I wish I had a great-grandfather kiln because I would like something much larger. They're all electric. Now here is the main working table that I use. Uh, I also have another one, which is a very beautiful oak table that came from my school in England. It was given to me when I set up my first studio in Putney. It's a beautiful oak table, and I've made hundreds of pieces of work on that. But I decided to make myself a slightly higher table to work on. I think I must be growing I use both of them, but this is the main working table, uh, certainly that I'm using now. And here's a little creature who is um, not quite finished. Oh, let's have a slurp of wine. Yes, just like Keith Floyd would do. Oh, so we have a sort of fledgling thing here going on. Eventually, I hope he'll make his way to uh, my gallery in New York City, Kevin Morris Gallery, with a, a group of other birds that I've been trying to uh, to make over these past few weeks. And as usual, a, a flurry of drawings, doodles of different kinds, drawings from life. I've been looking at some chickens in a local orchard, Park Hill Orchard in East Hampton. They have some lovely specimens running around. So th these are just really very fast sketches. Trying to uh, 
trap some information uh, about these these strange creatures, and and then I begin to draw with more thought about making an actual sculptural piece. So this this inf original information is then developed into something um, less chicken-like, I suppose, more, more personal interpretation. My heat gun, which I use while I'm uh, making pieces to dry the clay off so I can work more quickly. Uh, some leftover rabbit sketches from the last sculpture. Uh, here are some glass tiles. Actually, these are very old. The two, the, all of these pieces are older than my daughter, so I know they're more. They're about thirteen years old, and I just dug them out because I noticed I had one that uh, wasn't finished, and they have melted glass in them. You see these two here; they're melted glass within the walls of clay, and I thought I would try and finish this one here and just see how it came out. They're very graphic. Um, images. I, I probably wouldn't do them quite like this now, but um, I have have this little chicken here, and I thought I'd just see if she was worth finishing. Drawing materials. What's over here? Oh yeah, lo always lots of leftovers in my studio. All the, all the good stuff goes to the gallery, and I get left with the remnants. So here are some heads which were left over from um, an exhibition I did a few years ago which was just on heads, a room full of heads. I quite like these. And a tile that was used in a demonstration and there's the head. Those of you that have my book on figure and animal sculpting, that head is in the book. Some more head remnants and another tile from the same time as the ones we just looked at with melted glass uh, in the centre. Here's the cat that was in the figure sculpting book. I have a wonderful skull here of a bison that I bought from the local bison farm in Hadley. Special order. I haven't drawn it yet. I'm looking forward to really getting to grips with that piece. And here is a rabbit. Oh, I was just about to turn the camera around. I don't think I will. Now he's not fired. Um, so he's in his raw state with some slip on. But I have high hopes for him. It's always a funny stage, the, the pre-fired stage. It's, it's not quite as brutal as, as the bisque stage when things come out looking very blank. But still there's a an uneasiness about this, this kind of finish. Now over here is a general area for pieces to dry out and it's all storage I suppose. So the lower area has some more birds which are part of the new series. None of these are fired. And a rabbit who's been waiting many years to be fired because he's too big for my three kilns. So he's a very patient rabbit. Up here, all sorts of odds and ends. There's a pig that never was quite good enough. See, he's very sad. He knows he was never quite good enough to go to a gallery. Some vases from the book on pinch pottery that I did. Some rather dubious looking pigs which are part demonstration and part finished in the studio. Another very old pig at the back. Uh, a wall mounted bird. A strange figure from the back. I'm not really going to show you what's at the top because it's almost like uh, the worst of the worst up there but not so bad that they need to go in the bin. And then over here the usual glazes and raw materials that you'll find in every potter, potter's studio. They always occupy a large amount of space. Uh, 
but very, very necessary. And, uh, oh, actually, I was going to show you this rather lovely chicken here, which was made by a student of mine, Cathy Santisi. She came to take a workshop with me. She made this very handsome cockerel. She needs to come and collect him because he's been fired. And the last wall I'll show you, if the light is good enough, again, an, an assortment of skulls, bones. Oh, there's a dried frog. Pig skull. Just odds and ends, things that are of interest. Not necessarily a direct influence, but food of, of a sort. Mannequins, lots of containers of glass and nails, things that I might use in my sculpture. So when I do have a potter's wheel, because I do throw a lot of my sculpture on the wheel, having trained as a potter, and that's the way out. So thank you.